Good afternoon. I'm Rick McCutcheon, Dean of Arts at Thompson Rivers University. Welcome to the Dean's Corner, where I get to talk a little bit about things that matter to me and I hope to you. Uh, today I'm standing beside my uh, case here where I have my fountain pens. I, I own a few of them. Not a lot compared to some. I'm not really a collector uh, so much as a user and I, I use them every day. Um, but I do have a few and these have been collected I guess over the last 40 years or so. And today uh, I would like to talk about them but what you're going to find out is that I'm actually going to be talking about the climate crisis. But I want to do that by talking about one of my favorite pens. So I'm just going to grab it here. This is a Schaefer pen. And I'm going to grab this Pelican pen. Uh, and I'm just going to go over and sit at my table for just a couple of minutes and visit with you about this. So I would never have guessed as a young person <clears throat> that I would use fountain pens. Uh, it wasn't something I grew up with. Uh, and yet here I am uh, using them every day. My first fountain pen is this one right here. Uh, I hope you can see on the barrel that I have used it so much that the brassing has come right through and it's still usable today. This is the third nib. I have probably written tens of thousands of words with this particular pen. I purchased this pen in my first year of university, 1981, and I did so having seen one of my professors uh, using this exact pen. Uh, in the first term of university, I went to his office and I said, I noticed you were using an interesting pen. I've never seen one like that, which shows how uh, sheltered I had been. <laughs> And he pulled it out of his pocket and he handed it to me and he said, yes, this is a pen that I've used for a number of years. He says, I had a few of them, uh, but I use it every day. Well, um, because of that influence, I thought, well, if it's good enough for him, I'm going to try it too. So I went down and uh, I pulled out a, a pretty a decent amount of money at that point, uh, probably about 25 or $30, I think. Uh, back in 1981 for a student, that would have been a fair bit. And I purchased this pen, this exact pen, in 1981. So we're coming up on 40 years that I've had it. This pen represents a number of things. And I thought that it might be interesting for you to hear about it. Uh, and where I'm going to go with it is that this pen represents an attempt on a very, very small scale to what we need to do on a large scale, which is to address the climate crisis. This pen, uh, with a fine point, uh, uses uh, water-based ink. Uh, I use a fountain pen because as a scholar, uh, how I communicate is important. I have gotten to know this pen in a sense, it's my tool as a scholar. And I have used this pen so much that it has fit to my hand. I know it inside out. I can take it apart, put it together. I know how it operates under different temperatures and with different ink. In other words, this has become an extension of me as a scholar. Uh, and that's important to me. Uh, I don't change it. I don't uh, use different pens a lot. I ink maybe two pens at a time, and the rest I store, and those uh, are used on a regular basis to keep them in good health. Something really important to know about fountain pens is that they are much easier to write. Ergonomically, uh, when you hold a fountain pen and you are using it, it is quite a different experience. Uh, with a rollerball pen or something similar to that, which is very common and I want to talk about in a moment, uh, you actually have to control the pen because what you're really doing is using a ball bearing on the end of a little wee point and you have to control the pen from running off in different directions. With a fountain pen you can use very light touch and you drag the pen across the paper and it is much better for our hands and we get less tired. I could write longer with a fountain pen than I actually could with a ballpoint pen. So the pen becomes this extension of what I do as a, a scholar, as a dean. The other thing, though, that I have come to realize, and this came years after I first started doing this, is that you know, this pen also is something that I don't lose. 
I use it a lot, and I make a point of knowing where it is. I don't throw it out. Now, a lot of people use single-use, throwaway pens like this. This happens to be a Bic pen. It's one of the most ubiquitous pens that you can find in the world. Do you know that there are 15 million pens like this sold every day? On average, 57 pens each second. You can do the calculation and see how many hundreds of thousands, indeed it's over billions, of these pens have pr been produced. And this just is one company, BIC. And all of these pens share something in common. They all are made of plastic. They all use a, a refill that you could potentially change, but which very rarely is by students for sure. And these get thrown out. Because they're so inexpensive, it's so common too to see that they get lost or they get set to a side. Uh, they get uh, thrown into drawers and forgotten about. And so these pens really are not something that we care too much about. If you think about it, imagine a billion of these pens alone going into our refuse. And imagine that these all are single-use plastic. And I've thought about that a lot. This is just one company. There are many. But as we transition, we have to start thinking about sustainability and about everything that we do contributes in one way or another to this uh, climate crisis. Now, I don't have anything against BIC. They're actually a pretty good pen. Uh, in my daily use, I do keep uh, one or two ballpoint pens. Uh, one thing that they work very well for uh, is to sign documents with multiple uh, pieces of paper that have to be pushed down through two or three. So I do keep one or two around, uh, and I use ones uh, that are themselves a metal body and which have use a very standard refill, and I am very careful about making sure to use those refills until they are empty. You know, this isn't meant to be a guilt trip. Uh, we use the tools that we have at hand and we try to do the best job we can. Those of you who, for example, are left-hand dominant, uh, they do make fountain pens for you. Uh, they also make special inks now for people who are left-hand dominant, so you can use them if you're left-handed or right-handed. Um, and there are some very good uh, pens now that are not fountain pens that use similar ink which is water-based and tinted um, and so there's lots of options that are available. My point though today is just to say that everything is worth thinking about. You know an unexamined life is a poorer life and I like to think uh, about everything that we do here. So that's my thought for the day I thought on this day I would offer though that if you are a student who is registered in a Faculty of Arts program, I happen to have three really nice fountain pens here. Um, and so I'd like to invite you, if you want to experiment with this, uh, to come and pick up one of these pens. So the first three Faculty of Arts students who are enrolled in a program major in the Faculty of Arts uh, come to the front desk of the Dean's office here in AE building and I will be happy uh, to give you one of these pens. I'll even sit down with you if you want uh, and I'll fill it with its first uh, filling of ink uh, and we'll talk a little bit about how to use it because you do need to learn how to use it and I will wish you the very best. So thank you for letting me talk a little bit about something that is actually pretty small, this little fountain pen, uh, but which connects to concerns that all of us in this university, I'm sure, would care about. Take care, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye now.